So in this exercise, we talked about state machines. We talked about the basic idea that a state machine is code that runs differently depending on the value of an internal variable called state. We talked about the idea of a state diagram as being a way to indicate how the machine or how code runs from different mode to mode to mode. We talked about how code can be executed on the transition between states or how limits and other parameters can be checked during a state. We created a type def to contain both the device references for the hardware we need for our state machine as well as the internal data. Finally, we created a sub-VI, which in this case we placed within our teleop VI to contain our state machine. Now that you've seen this approach of creating a state machine, I want to make some slight modifications to this code. Some of you may have noticed that we never made use of the current motor speed or the three Boolean input values. I want to make that modification now and show you how we can take advantage of that information in a debugging dashboard type of application. So what we're going to do is just move everything over a little bit, make a little bit of room so that we can move each of our digital input get commands to be outside the case structure. Because what we're going to do is we're actually going to get the digital values every time through the loop. So we're going to read the lower limit value the ball sensor and the upper limit switch each time through the loop. And before we go into the case structure we're actually going to bundle those values right into our cluster. So we're going to start with the lower limit switch value, a little bit more room, clean up our wires, and hook up our values. So there's our lower limit switch, there's our ball sensor next, and there's our upper limit switch third. Again, just make a little bit more room. And there's no reason to read them twice, so wherever we were reading the upper limit switch inside the case structure, we can take the value right from here. Wherever we were reading the ball sensor, we can Again, take the value right from here. And wherever we were reading the lower limit switch, we can take the value right from here. So now we don't even need these references wired in to the case structure. So the reason for doing this, and thus putting them into the cluster, we'll see in a moment. But the last parameter that we needed to put into the cluster, is remember we had room for the current motor speed. Wherever we're writing to our motor, let's also write that value into the cluster. Let's go through each of our cases. put that in place. There. And so now what we've done, apart from messing up some of our wires, is made sure if we close this VI and return to the robot main and take a look in the teleop VI, we've made sure that all the data that we're measuring within our state machine is available in this wire and thus in the robot data cluster. If we review what we did in a previous exercise, which was to create a debugging dashboard type of VI, 
which would allow us to pull out whatever data we needed from our main robot data by using an unbundled by name. And we could create a debugging dashboard just like we did before, but notice now that we have access to all of the information in our state machine, including the current state, the delay end time, the values of the three Boolean inputs, and the current motor speed. So this is a tremendous benefit that allows us to debug and test. And when it comes time to make your dashboard, which will run in competition, that same information can be available then. So the act of making all these internal variables inside the type def makes it very easy to do debugging, testing, and just to make sure what state everything's in. So if we were to pull out just the values we want to see, such as the lifter state, we could create an indicator for that in our debug screen. And we could also create indicators for each of our digital inputs so that it would be very easy to debug the state of our lifting mechanism. So if we were to take these controls align them, and space them properly. We could resize them so that we could very easily debug and see what's going on. Thank you very much for watching this video. There have been several pop-ups throughout this video, which for subscribers of the LVMastery.com online training will drill you right into the training material relevant to that particular section. Remember that these introductory videos are intended to get your feet wet and get you introduced to LabVIEW. There's lots to learn about LabVIEW, and we're very proud of the LVMastery.com online learning experience. We've had a lot of great feedback from other first team members and other high school students who have taken the training. I'd also like to mention the buy one, give one special offer for mentors, teachers, and parents associated with first teams. We're allowing anyone who's associated with the first team to purchase the LV Mastery online training for the academic price of $500 for all three courses. And for anyone who takes us up on that offer, we'll donate a training seat to a member of their team as well. Thank you very much for watching. This has been Ben Zimmer from LVMastery.com. Bye for now.